question is, what have we done to, to make sure that these, uh, these applications are going to be secure and, and, and don't uh, violate user privacy and other things that, uh, that they could do technically? And this is, a, this is a big concern. It is a dangerous world out there. There are mobile viruses of all sorts uh, that, that, that people have to put up to, with. And so we've tried to strike a, a, a really good path here. On, on one side, you've got a, a closed device like the iPod, uh, which always works. You pick it up, it always works, because you don't, you don't have to worry about third-party apps mucking it up. And on the other side, you've got a Windows PC where people spend a lot of time every day just getting it back up to where it's usable. And, and we, we want to take the best of both. We want to take the reliability uh, and the dependability of that iPod, and we want to take the ability to run third-party apps from the PC world, but without, uh, without the malicious application. So how are we going to do that? The way we're going to do that is that the developers have to register with us, and for that $99 that they pay to join the program, they actually get a electronic certificate. And that tells us who they are. So if they write a malicious app, we can track them down, we can tell their parents, and, uh, and uh, uh, we will know who they are. The other thing that we can do, since the distri distribution of their applications is going to be through the App Store, if we're alerted to a malicious app that we didn't catch, we'll turn off the spigot so no more people download it. And uh, so we're putting controls in place, some of which we're talking about here today, and others which we'll just keep to ourselves for now, to, to keep the iPhone a, a great experience for users. But we put a lot of thought into this, and I think it's a real problem. You have anything to add to that? Or? Well, I mean, t technically, we're we're putting you know putting a number of different uh, things in place, from sandboxing mm -hmm. to other you know, technical things you want to do to protect applications and the system. But primarily, you know, we're actually when people submit their applications, we'll make sure that it's not doing certain things it shouldn't be doing. Legally, you're obligated not to do those things as part of the limitations. And so we think both technically and on the other side, we can really you know protect people, and we will. We'll do the best job we can, and we'll learn as we go. So it's not going to you're saying it's not going to be as secure as the closed iPod platform, just by definition, because you've got access to people coming in. That's correct, but we think we've put in good safeguards where if we miss something, we'll be alerted to it real fast by users, and we'll just turn off the spigot so no more users have problems, and we'll, again, go talk to that developer's parents and get them 